The conflict in Ukraine has become a significant proving ground for new weapons technology, and while efforts to provide fighter aircraft to Ukraine have encountered obstacles, Advanced Unmanned Aerial Systems UAS, are exempt from such restrictions. In the latest U.S. aid package for Ukraine, valued at approximately $2 billion and announced on February 24th, a variety of new UASs are included. This aid, provided through the U.S.-Ukraine Security Assistance Initiative USAI, which funds purchases directly from industry instead of relying on American supplies. According to Caitlin Lee, Senior Fellow for UAV and Autonomy Studies at AFA's Mitchell Institute for Aerospace Studies, the UASs represent a natural progression in terms of equipment for Ukraine. I believe that what we are witnessing is the U.S. building upon the success of smaller drones in Ukraine and maximizing that potential in the absence of the capability to send larger manned or unmanned aircraft into the conflict," said Lee. Neither Russia nor Ukraine have been able to attain air superiority in the outgoing conflict, leading both sides to resort to drones as a safer means to target ground objectives from above. Russia has extensively employed Iranian-made kamikaze drones to attack Ukrainian infrastructure, which presents a novel and cost-effective solution to bypass Ukrainian air defenses while still achieving successful air-to-ground hits. In the eastern part of Ukraine, where the fight is currently taking place, Ukraine has also utilized drones such as Turkish-made Bayraktar TB2s and quadcopters for artillery spotting. Ukraine has also employed off-the-shelf drones to drop explosives, a tactic that ISIS has previously used against US-backed forces in Iraq and Syria. The new UASs that the U.S. will supply include systems that are either still undergoing testing or have been used only sparingly to date by U.S. forces. These include Switchblade 600s, Jump 20s, Altia 600s, and Cyberlux K8s, of which only the Switchblade has been previously promised in aid packages. During a press briefing on February 24th, Pentagon Press Secretary Brigadier General Patrick S. Ryder emphasized that unmanned systems are now part of the modern way of warfare. He added that it has become evident to everyone in the past five to seven years, particularly as groups like ISIS have begun using drones and the impact they have had on the ongoing conflict. However, Ryder cautioned that the drones may not arrive until late spring or later, well after the fighting is expected to intensify. He had declined to specify the exact numbers or delivery timeline. Drones to come. Upcoming drones include the Altia 600, a compact drone capable of flying more than 270 miles. The manufacturer, Area I, a subsidiary of defense startup Andrew promotes the drone as a modular system that can accommodate an array of sensors or payloads through its nose cone. The drone is tube launched and can be recovered. The U.S. Army has tested the drone in various forms, including ground launches, air launch effects, ALE, from helicopters, and operating in swarms. Altius has also been tested as an electronic warfare platform, and Anduril recently added a loitering munitions capability to the platform. It remains unclear what payloads and launchers Ukraine will receive along with the drones. Another drone is the AeroVironment Jump 20, a vertical takeoff and landing drone that can perform surveillance missions for over 14 hours with a range of about 115 miles, according to its manufacturer. The Jump 20 has already been fielded for U.S. Special Operations Forces, and the U.S. Army has awarded an $8 million contract to begin purchasing Jump 20s to perform tactical missions for American troops. Its design is conventional, with fixed wings and a front propeller. However, it also features smaller, vertically mounted propellers, which eliminates the need for runways and is one of its selling points. The Switchblade 600, made by AeroVironment like the Jump 20, has a longer range and bigger warhead compared to the tube-launched Switchblade 300 drone currently used by Ukraine. The Switchblade 600 can carry a 30-pound payload for about 40 minutes over 25 miles, making it ideal for anti-armor missions. AeroVironment states that its patented wave-off and recommit capability allows operators to abort the mission at any time and then re-engage either the same or other targets multiple times based on operator command. Limited information is available about the Cyberlux K8, manufactured by the Young Cyberlux Corporation. 
Although Ukraine has already extensively used small quadcopters, which are also among the company's products. Caitlin Lee cautioned against interpreting the new systems as indicative of a new way of conducting warfare for the U.S., suggesting instead that the systems could be useful in specific situations. The threat environment hasn't really pushed us towards some of the smaller commercial solutions. However, I think we're starting to recognize their value for allies and partners, Lee stated. The technologies that have had some success in Ukraine are likely not the same technologies the U.S. would need if we were to directly engage a peer adversary like China. The MQ-9 is conspicuously absent from the new U.S.-provided drones. Ukraine has requested Reaper drones, and General Atomics, the manufacturer, has promised to supply them from its own stocks. Imagine if Ukraine had access to UAVs that had an order of magnitude more payload, 12 times the range the ability to fly across the entire country of Ukraine and stay aloft for over a day. Retired Lieutenant General David A. Deptula, Dean of the Mitchell Institute, remarked, I'm referring to the MQ-1 Grey Eagle and MQ-9 Predator, of which the U.S. has dozens sitting in storage crates in the western desert, not in use or planned for use by any U.S. agency. And that's all the content for today. What do you think about this story? Please leave your thoughts in the video comments. Thank you for watching and supporting the channel. If you enjoyed it, please give me a like, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to turn on the notification bell. For now, goodbye and see you next time.